Well, thank you for joining us back today. It is a day that ends in Y, imagine that. All right, well, thank you for joining us here at Love and Money Secrets TV. I'm your host, Dame Lillian Walker, and we are on chapter one and then going into chapter two. Let's jump back in where we left off yesterday in chapter one, and this is page 16 of your book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. So another way to look at how we humans and the quantum field are interconnected is through the concept of quantum entanglement or quantum non-local connection. This is really key, so pay close attention. This is scientific evidence that we are entangled non-locally, which means that it doesn't matter where your geographical location is, you can you are entangled with other energies, with other people. So you are, that's why distance healing, remote healing is possible because in quantum, we are all connected. Essentially, once two particles, you can basically say two people because we are a collection of particles. So once two people or two particles can be initially linked in some way, they will always be bonded together beyond space and time. I'm gonna pause right now. Those of you who don't know this, anytime you come into an interaction with another human being, let's say you, yesterday you were at the supermarket and you started talking to a person in the line, or you introduced yourself to uh, someone at the supermarket, you are now entangled with that person. Their energy and your energy is connected. Some greater, some smaller, it all depends on whatever your resonant frequency is in your body and their resonant frequency. If you're both vibrating at the, high, at the same high level, you'll be more connected. If there's more disparity, then the connection will be lesser. As a result, anything that is done to one will be done to the other, even though they are spatially separated from one another. This means that since we two are made up of particles, we are all implicitly connected beyond space and time. And what we do unto others, we do unto ourselves. Okay, I'm gonna pause right here again because I think this is something where, you know, oftentimes we have certain languaging and certain words that have either religious or cultural nuances attached to them. And then we have a prejudice. We have a filter or a paradigm that we overlay on it and we either increase its value or decrease the value because of that. So I'm prefacing saying that because this is this is connected to what some people call karma. Newton's third law of, of physics, which is, you know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The bottom line is because we have this entanglement at different degrees, there's, you know, you heard of 50 shades of gray and it's basic, basically 50 shades. It's actually not 50. It's an infinite uh, light spectrum of shades of light from dark to light. And so you're entangled with people at different levels. And so what happens is that whatever you do, you're doing it to yourself multiple folds. So if you're hating somebody, that energy of hate that you're spewing out is coming back to you multiple fold. If you're spewing out love, that energy of love is coming back to you multiple fold. And so, you know, that's what some people call karma. Whether you do something good, it comes back to you. Whether you do bad, something comes back to you. Again, Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It's the law of cause and effect. And the Descartes, Descartes being one of the old fathers of physics and Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, who tried to quantify and organize the universe into a, a certain pattern and a certain order so that we could predict outcome. Okay, so this means that since we too are made up of particles, we are all implicitly connected beyond space and time. What we do unto others, we do unto ourselves. So think about the, the implications of this. If you can wrap your mind around the concept, then you'd have to agree that the you that exists in a probable future is already connected to the you in this now, in a dimension beyond space and time, time and space. So stay tuned. By the end of this book, 
that idea just might seem normal to you. I'm gonna pause right here. Okay, another thing, I'm not, I don't believe Dr. Joe Dispenza mentioned it in, in the Becoming Supernatural book, which is the first book that we read, reviewed, and we applied, and continue to apply. And this is just a building block. This book is a great second place to go to elaborate and to build further on your knowledge of what you've been practicing, applying, and learning, and approving. And one of the things that he doesn't, I don't recall him ever mentioning it, but from all of my, my scientific and medical studies, starting back from a couple decades ago, at least a few decades ago, when I went to, to USC, and in my studies of pre-med biological sciences, of course, I had to take genetics, phys physics, and all sorts of different classes. But one of the things that we learned about energy and it was really evident in my genetics class, we studied this. And since then, there's a lot of other quantum physics to support this. That's actually, this is something that you can measure. And just stay with me here, because there's a reason that I'm taking you down this particular path. And I'm bringing your focus and your attention to this, because this is going to help you coalesce this inside your mind and in your intellect, so that your, your soul already knows this. And whatever is being said here, that pay close attention to anything that resonates with you, okay? For example, I'm in this room right now. Even though I leave this room physically, because I literally walk out the door, make no mistakes, I have an energetic, like, thumbprint. The energy of me, my electromagnetic frequency, even though I leave the room, the electromagnetic frequency, my toroidal field, EMF field, still stays here even though I leave the room. Wherever, everywhere, <laughs> Brian Buffini, a really dear friend of mine, Brian Buffini, his mother, cute little Irish lady, always says, everywhere you go, there you are, which is so true. Everywhere you go, there you are. And what she's alluding to is that wherever you go, you take yourself with you. So nothing's gonna change until you change. So as I sit here, I leave this room and my Electromagnetic frequency is still here. So I want you to think about the implications of this because obviously I'm not just in this room. You know, I go downstairs, I go out to my car, I go to, I go to stores, I go to places. So everywhere I go, the electromagnetic field that has the frequency and has the soul print if you will, of me that identifies me as a unique human being remains after I leave that space. And then over time, the longer it goes that I'm not there, then that energy dissipates. That's why sometimes you will walk into a room. I haven't had this happen too often, but every once in a blue moon, you'll walk into a space, you'll walk into a room and it has a bad feeling. There's bad juju there, as they say, just to use a colloquialism. They'll have bad juju, bad vibes, just there's like a bad energy that doesn't feel good there. Uh, true story. I'm going to share with you a friend of mine. His name is Joe. He owned the Exit Realty in Memphis, well, not Memphis, in Nashville, Tennessee. This was at the peak of the foreclosure market. There were tons of short sales. There were many homes that were abandoned by people. There were homes that were foreclosed and then they were foreclosed and then they were empty and vacant for months months and months and months and some of these houses were taken over by squatters some of them drug addicts would find them and they would use the houses for who knows you know whatever their drug activity was and illegal activity and in this particular house um, and he happens to be a spiritually sensitive individual he said that when he got to the house as he was walking up to the front door he was starting to get a feeling of uneasiness now two things about joe i'll tell you he is a spiritually sensitive and an energetically sensitive individual and luckily for him he is also a, a, a martial artist so he has i can't remember how many black degrees and several martial arts forms he can protect himself, but he's also very aware of his entire surroundings. Martial arts as a physical, but also as a mental and spiritual discipline. So he went to, as he felt that uneasiness, as he came into uh, walking up to the front door to take the key out of the lockbox and let himself in, he's paying now more close attention because he had that feeling of unease. As he walked into the house, opened the door, he doesn't know what he's gonna find when he's gonna go in there. He walks in and then 
without seeing anything to alarm him. The place was vacant. It was open, airy, and bright, but it was vacant. And then he, as I recall, he said that he had like, you know, the hairs on the back of his neck just kind of stuck, stood up. And then he looked to the right and it said red rum. Oh. As soon as he saw that, he left. Okay, red rum backwards. It's the word murder spelled backwards. So he knew something was wrong and he was out of there. No reason to kind of sit around there and uh, tinker with anything. Who knows if there's somebody in another room there. It's not worth, you know, risking your life to sell a home. I don't remember if it was that he was going to list it for a bank, what the situation was, but he was out of there. That's not the first time in, in my career as someone having done real estate for a couple decades, both the mortgage banking as well as my real estate, international real estate brokerage, I can tell you tons of different stories where we had similar things. And because people paid attention to their intuition, they saved themselves from a very bad situation, oftentimes seeing things that maybe they wish they hadn't seen. So my point to you being that obviously the people who were there prior who did whatever it is that they did, their energetic imprint was still there when he showed up, which is why he felt the unease as he walked up to the stairs, which is why he had the hairs stand up on the back of his neck as he entered that living room. So my, my, this is a, a caution, a pay attention, a be aware, do not ignore those feelings, those caution, those red flag signals that are there to protect you. Do not, do not say, oh, that's just, you know, that's a silly notion, a silly thought coming through my head. No, that is there to protect you, to keep you safe. So do not ignore that. If, let's say, if you're watching this and you're an Uber driver, I don't care if you're a male, if you're a female, if you're a four foot 10, or if you're seven foot six, doesn't matter. If you go to pick some, or let's say it doesn't even get to the point where you're going to pick up somebody and you're an Uber driver and you see on your app or however that works and you get a bad feeling about the person, you can deny it there. Let's say you think, you think everything is fine. You accept the drive, you know, the order and you get, and when the person goes to walk up, you get a bad feeling you can say no. Having a bad feeling is a perfectly legitimate reason and a good response, a good reason not to take that trip. You don't know, um, you don't know if you saved yourself and why find out? Why not self save yourself the grief, the crisis, the anguish, whatever, or who knows if it's gonna be something worse. So. Pay attention to those signals. There's a reason. Those feelings are there as a guidance positioning system for you, a guidance protection system. So make no mistakes. There are energetic imprints. That is why there are certain places that feel energetically better to you than other places which don't feel quite as good because there's obviously been presence of beings that have given that place that not so good vibe or that awesome vibe or that neutral vibe. It's because of the electromagnetic fields of the people that remain there long after they're gone. And over time, those get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And yes, there are places that tend to attract more beings in physical and non-physical form uh, to it. And some just like, I think I mentioned in at the beginning of the first chapter is that groups, businesses, cities, areas, sports teams, it doesn't matter. All of them have a collective overall persona, personality and energetic vibe about them. And so as you become more aware of these frequencies and pay closer attention, you're gonna to start to notice things that you didn't notice before. But you're gonna receive the benefit from that and if you ignore it, you get the consequence of, of that. But now you don't have to be subject to that unnecessarily. Okay. So if, so here it's also talking about the you that exists and a probable future is already connected to the you. Okay. So you already understand the concept of having an electromagnetic frequency that is left just by your sure, just by you showing up in a space. 
When you show up in a space in 5D, you also leave an electromagnetic frequency in the thumbprint, which is how you are able to magnetize that which you want out of 5D into your present reality. Every time, every single time you make a decision, i.e. you chose, you decided, at the moment of choice, that means you're exercising your free will. The moment you exercise your free will, you make a choice, you decide. Remember what I said earlier about the word decide. Day is of, sidre, sidre in Latin, the original root word C-I-D, C-I-D-R-E, means to cut. When you cut, there is an incredible amount of energy that comes from the cosmos, from the environment around you, and it's released into you in support of the choice that you're making. So you are making a choice at that time, you're releasing energy. So now you're going in a different direction than you were just a moment before. So you chose to watch this video. There's a version of you that still exists in quantum that chose not to watch this video that version of you still exists that version of you it's life as usual nothing else that version of you is in my opinion less intelligent because you're not learning anything new because you are now exposing yourself to this information and as Kandel the researcher scientist actually showed in his studies when you learn new information when you're reading learning becoming exposed to new information uh, new ways of thinking instead of using the left hand side of your brain which is firing and wiring 1300 neural circuitry in your brain now because it's something new that you're not familiar with you double the speed and double the number of neural circuitry of neurological pathways in the brain that are used so instead of 1300 you're now firing and wiring 2600 that's double you're actually increasing your iq you're increasing the electromagnetic frequencies in your brain the amount of electricity that are actually emitted from your brain if you have heart about this information and are really putting all of your heart into learning applying it reviewing it making it your own embracing it you've got 2600 neurological pathways of the brain your brain right now is lighting up as a Christmas tree as it's receiving this through your eyes, your visual, visual circuitry. This is, has to do with neurosomatics and how the brain is wired. So your brain is neurosomatically taking in the sensory system of vision, of eyesight, because you're watching this video. Second neurosomatic sensory system is auditory. So you're listening to this video as I speak and as you become aware of the words that I speak and you start to notice and realize the deep truth that I'm speaking there's a place deep down inside of you where the real you resides where it recognizes this truth and this begins to resonate with you and you start to become aware and you understand the truth it's like you knew this all along and it's like almost like it was a vague dream and now you're starting to remember and what does remember mean? Remember means that the member of your body is re-engaging in your body. That's what it means to remember. And to understand means that you stand under this, which you are now, it's at the forefront of your mind. It was in the back recesses of your mind and now it's being pushed forward to your frontal lobe so that now you can start to make sense of it, not only logically, my, my intention is to come from a heart space, sharing with you the intellectual, scientific knowledge, and also my own experiences so that there is the integration of heart and brain so that you have heart and brain coherence. And this is what this information is all about, is learning how to have heart and brain coherence so that you can start to heal yourself and manifest all that your heart's desire. We're talking about, you have to agree that the you that exists in a probable, it's a probable future that is already connected to the you in this now. And that's what you choose that future, that thing that it is that you want and you can bring it into your now. So it's in a dimension beyond time and space. Stay tuned. By the end of this book, that idea just might seem normal to you. Okay, how is that gonna happen? 
by reading this book, by studying this information, watching this video, maybe not just once, maybe watching it two, three times so that you can become so familiar with it that instead of only 10 or 15% of the material retain, being retained in your memory, perhaps because you continue to expose yourself to it, maybe you'll play this video in the morning as you're getting ready and you're just listening to it as you're getting ready. Maybe during the middle of the day, you'll take a little break and say, oh, I'm just gonna watch 15 minutes of this video because I, I watched it through the first time. The second time I listened to it as I was getting ready the last couple mornings. Uh, and now I'm gonna listen to it on break for 15 minutes and 15 minute increments. That's how you start to assimilate the information. So without effort, yeah, make no mistakes. You can learn this information effortlessly without efforting by rote, by repetition, you start to assimilate this information, make no mistakes. Oh, by the way, you, oh, by the way, by, by now you should know that there is a reason why you are watching this because you instinctively have a place inside you that wants to learn and absorb this and harness your power, how to stand in your power and be the creator of your universe. So the next heading here says, since we are all interconnected across distance and time, does this suggest that our thoughts and feelings can influence events in our past as well as those we desire in our future? In July 2000, Israeli Dr. Leonard Leibovici conducted a double-blind, randomized controlled tri trial involving 3,393 hospital patients divided into a control group and an intercession group. I gotta pause here. I want you to see this number. Do you see how it says 3,393? 3, Friends and gems, that is not a coincidence. The redundancy of all those threes, even nine is three sets of threes. There's six threes here. So you have the number three, which has, if you know anything about Fibonacci sequencing in science, if you know anything about Nikola's Tesla, he talked about how the whole universe is organized. You know, there's the power of the three, six, nine. Obviously, this doctor, Leonard Leibovici, understood what Nikola's Tesla, who was able to harness free electricity, free energy from the air, he understood how the universe was organized in 369. So in his study, he applied one of the principles of the universe, which is applying the principle of 369, doing thing in threes and associating what you're doing. Like he has three, three, nine, nine has three threes, and then three. So it's three, 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 three. There's energy that are connected to numbers. I'm trying to point these things out to you because when I first started this work years ago, I wasn't aware. I know I had a proclivity and an attraction to certain numbers. I later noticed about certain numbers being so prevalent in my life. And then I came to understand and know what the significance of those repeating numbers, what they were and how there weren't, they're not just coincidences, they're, they're clues that the universe is trying to give you. And the same is true for you in your life. So he had 3,393 hospital patients divided into a control group and an intercession group. He set out to see whether prayer, prayer, meditation, they're labels that basically mean the same thing, could have an effect on their condition. Prayer experiments are great examples of mind affecting matter at a distance. But stay with me here because everything is not always what it seems. Oftentimes, more often than not, things aren't what they seem. Leibovici selected patients who had suffered sepsis, an infection, while hospitalized. He randomly designated half the patients to have prayers said for them, while the other half were not prayed for. Oh, it looks like we've got somebody joining us. Haley. Thank you for joining us, Haley, on the Zoom call. We'll be opening this up for discussion and questions uh, in a little bit. So, he had selected patients who had suffered sepsis while hospitalized. He randomly designated 
half the patients to have prayers said for them. And while the other half were not prayed for, he compared the results in three categories, how long the fever lasted, the length of the hospital stay, and how many died as a result of infection. Okay, the prayed for benefit, and I want you to substitute the word pray for as, as opposed to meditated. So basically all that means is that they had their focused awareness on those people. That's all it is, okay? So they prayed for benefited from an earlier decrease in fever and shorter hospitalization time. The difference in the number of deaths among the prayed for and not prayed for group was not stati statistically significant, although better in the prayed for group. That's a powerful demonstration of the benefits of prayer and how we can send an intention out into the quantum field through our thoughts and feelings. However, there's one additional element to, to this story that you should know about. Did it strike you as slightly odd that in July 2000, a hospital would have more than 3,000 cases of infection at once? Was it a very poorly sterilized place or was there some kind of contagion running rampant? Oh. We got to pause, big time pause, pause. I should get my, my meditation bowl, the singing bowl there, and I should go cling. Friends and gems, you got to see the similarity to what's, what went on in this particular study and what's going on globally here where we have this whole, the C cases that are going around. There's people who are infected who don't have any um, don't come down with the illness who don't have any symptoms and then they're the people who actually get get ill who are actually ill to the point where they're hospitalized for there to be 3,000 cases of infection all at once in a hospital that is actually a catastrophe for any hospital that's incredible so actually so going back to the book actually those who were praying weren't praying for patients who were infected in 2000 <gasps> Pay close attention. They were not praying for patients who were affected in 2000. Instead, unbeknownst to them, they were praying for lists of people who had been in the hospital from 1990 to 1996. Four to 10 years prior to the experiment. The prayed for patients actually got better during the 1990s from the experiment conducted years later. That's right. So four to 10 years prior, these people had the infection and they're benefiting from this experiment that took, took place years later. So let me say this another way. The patients who were prayed for in 2000 all showed measurable changes in health, but those changes took effect years before. This is tangible evidence. This is sidebar. I'm not reading this part. This is tangible evidence that time and space do not exist. How we can collapse the particle, the particle waves. They're the potential waveforms of energy that turn into particles and we could reach back in time and we, we can in fact, we could reach back in time and affect the past. We can affect the present. We can affect the future because when we are in 5D, that energy is not bound. It doesn't, it's not on their radar. Time doesn't exist. It just knows the now. So that's why it affects all states of reality, all dimensions, all para parallel, multiple uh, universes, whatever language you want to give it. It, 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 it just is. Any, re any major religion will acknowledge that the presence of God, the presence of the I am, that universal infinite source of intelligence is not bound by time. It always is, always has been, is, and will be. Now, this is basically the same definition of, of energy. 
This is, this is, I know it's mind bending, mind boggling, mind blowing. Now, this leads to the question. If you were to pray or focus on an intention for a better life for yourself, could it affect your past, your present and future? Imagine, what would you do with that if you were able to, to clean up the things that you didn't like about your past, the things that were uncomfortable, the things that were traumatic, the things that were painful, the things that were unpleasant, the things that were unbearable. Imagine if you were able to go back, kind of like, it's like having a Hoover or a vacuum cleaner, you were able to suck it all up and delete it. And let's say, let's use the word sanitize it. You go back, you sanitize all of it. So now you retain all the wisdom that you've acquired, known and unknown to you at this moment in time. You retain the wisdom, you retain the things, the lessons learned, and you let go of the emotional charge. And now all that negative stuff is not negative. It's something that made you stronger, wiser, and a bigger persona, a larger expression of yourself. What, what, what would your life look like now that it's framed in that place? That's what you're able to do with this. That's what this work is all about. Amazing. So the quantum law says that all potentials exist simultaneously. I read that again. If you're reading with your books at home, if you have, whether it's a Kindle, HD Kindle Fire, or a good old fashioned paperback book, highlight this. The quantum law says that all, what does all include? All excludes nothing. It includes everything. So nothing is left out. All potentials exist at the same time simultaneously our thinking and our feelings affect all aspects of life beyond both time and space and beyond both space and time knowing that and learning how to how to mold the energy so that you can make use of that so you can take advantage of that which is your birthright applied knowledge is powerful but applied knowledge is supremely powerful and that's what this work is all about this is this is the journey that you and i have co-created with each other which is why we are connected through this internet broadcast so our state of being or state of mind when mind and body are one so please note throughout this book i will refer interchangeably to you having and creating a state of being or a state of mind. For example, we could say that how you think and how you feel create a state of being. I want you to understand that when I use the terms state of being and state of mind, your physical body is a part of that state. So in fact, as you will see later on, many people exist in a state in which the body has become the mind when they are ruled almost exclusively by the body and how it feels. So when I talk about the observer having an effect, it is not just the brain that is at work influencing matter, but the actual body itself. It is your state of being when mind and body are one as an observer, which has effects on the external world. So make no mistakes. So having control of your mind and this physical body, your awareness, your conscious awareness now is the master of your mind, the organ of the brain, which is separate from your mind. Don't make the mistake of thinking that your mind and your brain are the same thing, because you're not. Your organ is the interpreter of the vibrations of your body or your consciousness. And it can also sense exterior things too, but that's kind of getting a little bit, that's a little bit more advanced. You just need to be aware that your focused awareness, your choice to focus, like I am choosing to focus right now, looking into the camera, looking into your eyes. I can feel the energy coming in from the other side, just as you can feel my energy coming into the other side. That is a choice. 
my, my focus, my awareness, I'm choosing to focus on that particular thing to read this book. I'm using my, I'm commanding my brain to focus. Who's commanding my brain? My free will, my consciousness, my awareness. As soon as I'm aware of something, then I can focus it like a laser beam. So I'm telling my brain, I'm gonna focus here, okay? And because you have the ability to do that, we all have free will, it's our God-given birthright. We can also choose to use the brain to control this body. By doing that, the exterior environment that's outside of our body, we can control that. We can mold the clay of energy and turn it from potential waveforms, because as we learned in chapter one and we learned in the Becoming Supernatural book, everything exists until you observe, until you focus on it, it's potential waveforms of energy. That's what happens at the atomic level. And the moment you start to observe it, then you go from these waveforms that now they start to turn into particles. So at one point you have waveforms and particles, and then they become to all turn into particles. More and more start to turn into particles till boom, now you're able to see it in 3D. When mind and body are one, as an observer which has effects on the external world. So thoughts plus feelings produce tests to results. We communicate with the quantum field primarily through our thoughts and feelings. So since our thoughts are themselves energy, as you know, the electrical impulses the brain generates can easily be measured by devices such as an EEG, and they are one of the primary means by which we send out signals into the field. So before I go into greater detail on how this works, I wanna share with you a remarkable study that demonstrates how our thoughts and feelings influence matter. Cellular biologist Glenn Rain conceived of a series of experiments of test, which to test healers' ability to affect biological systems. I'm gonna repeat that again. Cellular biologist Glenn Rain, PhD, conceived of a series of experiments to test healers' ability to affect biological systems. So since DNA is more stable than substances such as cells, or bacterial cultures, he decided to have healers hold the test tubes containing the DNA. This study took place at the HeartMath Research Center in California. The folks there have conducted extraordinary research into the physiology of emotions and heart and brain interactions and much more. So essentially, they and others have documented a specific link between our emotional states and our heart rhythms. So when we have negative emotions such as anger and fear, our heart rhythms become erratic and disorganized. I'm gonna pause right here. That's basically a dissonance within our heart. So in contrast, positive emotions, love and joy, for instance, produce highly ordered coherent patterns that heart math researchers refer to as heart coherence. In Dr. Rain's experiment, he first studied a group of 10 individuals who are well practiced in using techniques that the heart math teaches to build heart focused coherence. They applied the techniques to produce strong, elevated feelings such as love and appreciation. Then for two minutes, they held the vials containing DNA samples suspended in deionized water. When those samples were analyzed, no statistical significant changes had occurred. When those samples were analyzed, no statistical significant changes had occurred. However, a second group of trained participants did the same thing, but instead of just creating positive emotions, a feeling of love and appreciation, they simultaneously held an intention, in other words, a thought. And as I mentioned before, if you pay attention to the word intention, attention, and intention, all intention is, is an inward focus of your attention. That's what intention is. The clue is in the word. Intention, it's an inside attention. Your inward mind is thinking on purpose of something specifically. That's your intention, okay? 
So the intention or a thought to either wind or unwind the strands of DNA. This group produced statistically significant changes in the confirmation, the shaping of the DNA samples. In some cases, the DNA was wound or unwound as much as 25%. Pause button, get out of town. And you're probably going, no way, just by holding a vial, a vial of DNA, just by focusing on winding or unwinding the DNA for two minutes, you can alter the DNA 25%. That means you can do it too. That's the whole point of the study. Anybody can do this. All you have to do is focus on it. You can wind or unwind your DNA. If you have pain, if you have a syndrome, if you have diabetes, you have multiple sclerosis, if you have brain damage, if you have a traumatic brain injury, if you have depression, if you have bipolar, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter what it is. If you've been traumatized because of physical abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse, spiritual abuse, if you do 25% four times, that's 100% you're healed. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. 25 times four is 100%. You can do this. This is exciting news. This is exciting evidence. And you don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to believe me. You can do your own Google searches. You can go onto YouTube, check out the HeartMath Institute, check out their research, check out. Better yet, before you do that, I encourage you to just go into the YouTube search and do Dr. Joe testimonials and look at the thousands of people who have been healed, who have healed themselves applying these principles, applying the formula. It's a simple formula. The hardest thing is to become disciplined. If you can discipline yourself to brush your teeth every morning, you can become disciplined enough to do this. Honestly, 25%. Speaking of 25%, there's another study. Everything has to do with your changing your chemistry. And there are physical things that you can do that will make significant changes and results and how you feel and how you respond and how you are. So something that I do every morning as part of my morning routine and then whenever I think of it during the day, I do this also. And something as simple as holding your fists up in the air, this is called the victory pose. You stand up with your legs, you know, down, hip, hip width apart. Your arms are straight out just by holding this pose for two minutes. This is scientifically proven. I think there's a gal that did a TEDx talk by the name of Amy Cuddy. She talked about the different poses and, and all the chemistry behind that, how this affects your emotional and psychological and your well-being states. Just holding this pose for two minutes increases your testosterone by over 25, over 25%, scientifically proven, just by doing this. And you're thinking, well, why would a woman need to increase her testosterone. First of all, men and women, we both have testosterone. Obviously men have more testosterone than we do. By us doing this too, we get more energy. We have um, increased willpower by holding this pose. Interestingly enough, also holding your fingers out like this, Dr. Cynthia Sue Larson. She's a physicist. She has, a, um, she has multiple degrees, uh, also a degree in divinity and, and so forth. She wrote Quantum Shifts, she had, uh, Reality Shifters, How to See Auras. She's published many, many, many books, and she's been a guest on my radio show, The Bottom Line Show Live. We talked about five different things that you can physically do with your body, one of them being the Wonder Woman pose, the Superman pose, which is what Amy Cuddy talks about, holding the fist in the air and having your legs just hip width apart. Holding your hands out like this also increases willpower. Skipping increases joy and increases endorphins and oxytocin in your body. These are little things that you can do every day that are gonna spike your vibe, up your vibe. A third group of trained subjects held a clear intent 
to change the DNA, but they were instructed not to enter into a positive emotional state. In other words, they were only using thought intention to affect matter. The result, no changes to the DNA sample, no changes. The positive emotional state that the first group entered did nothing by itself to the DNA, nothing. Another group's clearly held intentional thought unaccompanied by emotion also had zero impact. Only when subjects held both heightened emotions and clear objectives in alignment were they able to produce the intended effect. So an intentional thought I want to repeat that again, an intentional thought, which is a focused awareness and thought needs an energizer, a catalyst, and that energy is an elevated emotion, heart and mind working together. So your heart and your mind have to work together. They got to be connected and they got to work together and mind you, no pun intended, your heart has a far greater electromagnetic frequency and electrical conductivity than your brain does. So it's important that that energy in your heart isn't just locked in your heart because your heart is closed. You want to open that heart center up. That energy needs to be opened up and then that elevated emotion of unconditional love then will push up to your heart, to your fifth energy center, to your throat center, and then to your pineal gland and it'll affect also your pituitary gland. And when you connect your heart and your brain together, game over. That's when you start to manifest and you start to manifest a lot faster everything. So feelings and thoughts unified into a state of being. If a state of being can wind and unwind strands of DNA in two minutes, two minutes, what does this say about our ability to create reality? What the heart math experiment demonstrates is that the quantum field doesn't respond simply to our wishes, our emotional requests. It doesn't just respond to our aims or our thoughts. It only responds when those two are aligned or coherent. If you have a book, highlight that. Page 20. That is when they are broadcasting the same signal, when we combine an elevated emotion with an open heart and conscious intention, with clear thought, we signal the field to respond in amazing ways. So the quantum field responds not to what we want, it responds to who we are being. Pause button before we go into the next section. If you are focusing on what you want, Subconsciously, your brain is going, she wants that, he wants that. When you are in want, you are recognizing separation from you and the place that you want to be from you and the condition that you want, the place that you want, the person that you want, the state of being that you want. So you're separate from it. It's showing lack. It's, it's highlighting something that you do not have. Instead, you need to align yourself with that state of being that you want, that you aspire for, that you desire, and assume the wish is fulfilled and assume the state of being you would had, have if you were in that place of experiencing abundance, prosperity, that new job, that healing, that state of health, that state of more energy, that state of instead of being depressed, that state of having a joie de vivre, a, a, um, a zest for life, a joy for life, a joyful expectation of every new moment, every new day. Fake it till you make it. If fake it till you make it doesn't resonate with you, then you pretend, you daydream, you imagine. Every time we go into a movie theater, we co-create with the producer and we make believe that we are in that realm of whatever that movie is. 
which is why oftentimes, by the way, make no mistakes, every time you go into a movie theater, you are consciously aware that whatever you're seeing is fake. We all know that, it's a movie. However, how many of us have vicarious experiences? It's as if we're experiencing whatever the protagonist of the movie is experiencing when we go into a movie theater. We hear a shot, a bang or explosion and we jump in our chair. The explosion was not in our environment. It wasn't real, but we, we left, we suspended our disbelief. We left it at the door. We agreed to be entertained for the next two hours, 120 minutes, 190 minutes. Most films are 120 minutes or longer. You chose to leave your disbelief. There are things that they do in the movies and in film that we know that are not physically possible, but yet it's credible because it's a movie. But our bodies experience laughter, joy. How many times have you been emotionally provoked to tears? Tears of sorrow or grief. Maybe a character dies in the movie and you cry and grieve with the character. Oh, it's so sad. Oh my gosh, it broke my heart. Make no mistake, your body is physically feeling that and you're crying real tears. Maybe tears of joy, maybe tears of sadness. You're the producer, you're the director of your life. You are the screenwriter, you're choosing. Okay, I wanna have, I wanna make this amount of money. I wanna earn a million dollars, $10 million, $100 million. I wanna be a billionaire. I want to own my own island in the Caribbean. I want to, I wanna sail around the world for a year or for a year and a half. I want to travel all over the world. I wanna to go to 100 of the 198 countries that are on the planet. Whatever it is that you're trying to manifest, you just add this formula. You have that clear focused intention. You have the elevated emotion of joy. Of, of um, just, oh, it's so awesome. It feels so juicy and good. And it's like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I put the order in and it's like, I feel as if it's here now. And it's like, and then you finish and then you let it go. You don't know when it's gonna happen, but you know it will happen. And then you keep on juicing that because it feels so good to play with that. And then you imagine what you would be saying to your best friend. Oh my gosh, can you believe it? I'm like, you know, I'm here, you know, it's like, who would have ever thought, you know, 36 months ago, that I would be here, that I paid $3 million cash for this island in the middle of nowhere and it's so gorgeous and I'm able to have my friends come over and, you know, we can play on this island together and just rest and relax and I can come and go as I please and I have more money than I could ever spend and there's a lot more where this, where this came from or I am no longer impeded from walking easily. Let's say if you're struggling with some sort of health condition, you are no longer from being able to walk to the bathroom, walk to the kitchen, make your own meals from great pain that you needed others to do everything for you. Now you are in fact feeling the urge to get up and go and to take walks, something that you haven't done for 20 years. Make no mistake, there are people that I've worked with that I've actually guided through some of these processes. Some of them were all I did was the neural health reset and they're able to walk without pain and they're inspired. Now they're walking all the time and they hadn't been able to do that in 20 years. So this is, this is well within your reach. It's more than well within your reach. I get so excited about this stuff because it's so empowering. You, you have no idea and I want that for you. So on to the next section, thoughts and feelings broadcasting our electromagnetic signal into the quantum field. Since every potential in the universe is a wave of probability that has an electromagnetic field and is energetic in nature, it makes sense that our thoughts and feelings are no exception. I find it a useful model to think of thoughts as an electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings as the magnetic charge in the field. I want you to think about this in your mind's eye right now. Think of thoughts as an electrical charge. Here's a vision. Think of it as an electrical charge when you think. And your elevated emotion of joy, of gratitude, of appreciation, as it's like a magnet. It's magnetizing that energy. The thoughts we think send an electrical signal out into the quantum field in 5D, the realm of, you can't see it with your natural eyes. 
The feelings we generate magnetically draw events back to us. Together, how we think and how we feel produces a state of being, which generates an electromagnetic signature. I'm talking about the electromagnetic frequency, your toroidal field, the torus. So it generates magnetically, draw events back to us, and together how we think and how we feel produces a state of being which generates an electromagnetic signature that influences every atom in our world. This should prompt us to ask, what am I broadcasting, consciously or unconsciously, on a daily basis? Think about it. Think about that. What kind of feeling are you broadcasting out there? Are you broadcasting fear, worry, and doubt? Or the twins, hurry and worry? Are you always hurrying and scurrying everywhere? Where? Because you're worried you're going to fall short with not enough time, not enough guests, not enough energy, not enough, 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 not enough. Do you have a not enough disease? Hurry and worry? The twins of fear, these are the twin children of fear. The father and mother of fear, or the father and mother of worry and hurry or fear. Make no mistakes, because you're feeling that you're short, you're falling short, you're, there's not enough. Love knows that nothing is impossible. Love is infinite. That's not a good feeling state to think about yourself. You're not being loving towards yourself if you're hurrying and worrying. Your loving self knows that there's, not only is there more than enough time because time doesn't exist, but things can quantum happen for you in miraculous, unexplainable ways where things that you didn't even put time and effort to manifest before you. What could you do with that? This is the gold platter with the diamonds that are being given to you, the keys that we're, we're, we're trying to hand to you. I hope that you accept these keys and go, yes, I want the keys to the kingdom. It's all inside you already. Now I just have to tweak just a few little things. It, they're not major, huge things that you need to do. Yeah, getting rid of diabetes, getting rid of multiple sclerosis, getting rid of any kind of arthritis, getting rid of asthma, getting rid of cancer, getting rid of tumors, getting rid of, getting rid of, getting rid of, whatever those things are, you can dissolve them and make them things of your past. And it doesn't have to be this extraordinary effort. It doesn't. That's the good news. So all potential experiences exist as electromagnetic signatures in the quantum field. So there are an infinite number of potential electromagnetic signatures for genius. Yes, you can create, you can bring out the genius in you. You have a genie inside you, which only has your unique traits. That's one of my wishes is for you to find the genius within you and bring that out. So genius, you can bring out your genius, your wealth, your freedom, your health, that already exists as a frequency pattern of energy is already inside of you. If you would, if you could create a new electromagnetic field by changing your state of being, which matches that potential in the quantum field of information, is it possible that your body would be drawn to that event or that event would find you? I'm going to answer here sidebar. Yeah, it is gonna find you. And sometimes it'll surprise you how fast it finds you. Okay, so the potential, the next page, they have a diagram. I'm not gonna show you the diagram. I'm gonna urge you to definitely buy the book. And I'm gonna urge you to buy it. I don't, I'm not an affiliate. I don't even know if Dr. Joe, I don't think he has any affiliate marketing. Maybe he does, I don't know. But I don't make any money off of any meditations you buy from him, even though I keep on referring you to drjoedispenza.com. I don't make any money from you buying those meditations. I don't make any money from you buying the books because I don't write the book and he doesn't give me a commission or any kind of affiliate before that. I'm purely coming, this is, I'm paying it forward. I'm coming from a place where I want you to learn this. I want you to embrace this information. I want you to apply it. I want you to benefit from it. And I want you to share this with others too. That is my intention. 
So for your benefit, I know what has worked for me, I know will work for you. So watch these YouTube videos, get the book in digital form, Kindle, iPad, whichever suits you best, and get the paperback. You see the Breaking the Habit of Being You? That's the book, the first book that we did. See, I have the paperback and I obviously have the, the digital form too. Why would you need both? Because the digital version, not only are you reading and highlighting it, you can go and find things easily because you can, there's a search where you can put either a word or a phrase and go to anywhere in the book and you can find it right away. And there's the audio feature. Create possibilities. Okay, while you're getting ready in the morning, you could also listen to the audio version in the Kindle book. You could either do that or you could listen to the version on this YouTube video and listen to this so that you start to assimilate it, learn it, make it your own, okay? Why do you need the paperback? I'm appealing to the way your brain is wired by your using the paperback, by your eyes dancing off the pages and feeling the paper from the book, by your taking your highlighter and highlighting whatever it is that you need to highlight to know the action of your eyes seeing the words, feeling it, you're filing that information both conscious and subconsciously so that's why i'm telling you to do that it's a tactile kinesthetic experience by your listening to the book that's a third neurosomatic auditory response system that you're putting into place to fire and wire to file and to retrieve that information so that you recall make no mistakes you have a perfect memory Everybody has a perfect memory. Your subconscious and your conscious mind, it's like us videotaping 24 seven nonstop. It takes 100% of the information in. Now, to recall that information, some people are better than others with recall, but everybody has a perfect memory, everybody. And I, this has been proven when, when we put people under hypnosis and you put them in a hypnotic state, we can retrieve memories that oftentimes they've forgotten. They're like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. And other things, it's like, you know what? I kind of have a vague recollection of that. I don't have a crisp, I didn't have a crisp, clear memory of that, but in hypnosis, they had a crisp, clear memory of it. That shows you that the memory is intact. Emotionally, they may have suppressed that memory for reasons to probably protect them. But in hypnosis, we can pull it, we can put it out, pull it out like that. So, what I'm telling you here, what I'm sharing with you here is so that you get the optimal results in the shortest. My goal is to shorten the time frames, collapse the time that it takes you to receive results in all of this work. When we combine an elevated emotion with an open heart and a conscious intention with a clear thought, we signal the field to respond in amazing ways. The quantum field responds not to what we want, it responds to who we are being. Thoughts and feelings broadcast our electromagnetic signal to the quantum field. Since every potential in the universe is a wave of probability that has an electromagnetic field and is energetic in nature, it makes sense that our thoughts and feelings are no exception. I find it a useful model to think of thoughts as the electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings as the magnetic charge in the field. The thoughts we think send an electrical signal out into the field. The feelings we generate magnetically draw events back to us. Together, how we think and how we feel produces a state of being, which generates an electromagnetic signature that influences every atom in our world. This should prompt us to ask, what am I broadcasting, consciously or unconsciously, on a daily basis? All potential experiences exist as electromagnetic signatures in the quantum field. There are an infinite number of potential electromagnetic signatures for genius, for wealth, for freedom, for health that already exist as a frequency pattern of energy. If you could create a new electromagnetic field by changing your state of being, which matches that potential in the quantum field of information, 
Is it possible that your body would be drawn to that event or that event would find you? Figure 1E, if you have the book, look it up. All potential experiences exist in the quantum field as a sea of infinite possibilities. When you change your electromagnetic signature to match the one that already exists in the field, your body will be drawn to that event. You will move into a new line of time, or the event will find you in your new reality. Yes, friends and gents, to experience change, observe a new outcome with a new mind. Quite simply, our routine, known thoughts and feelings perpetuate the same state of being, which creates the same behaviors and creates the same reality. So if we want to change some aspect of our reality, we have to think feel and act in new ways. We have to be different in terms of our responses to experiences. We have to become someone else. We have to create a new state of mind. We need to observe a new outcome with that new mind. From a quantum standpoint, we have to create a different state of being as an observer and generate a new electromagnetic field and signature. When we do, we match a potential reality in the field that exists only as an electromagnetic potential. Once that match exists between who we are being and what we are broadcasting and the electromagnetic potential in the field, we will be pulled toward that potential reality or it will find us. That's what the law of attraction is telling us. You attract things into your experience. You attract experiences. You attract states of being. You attract people. You attract all sorts of things. So I know that it's frustrating when life seems to produce an endless succession of minor variations on the same negative outcomes. But as long as you stay the same person, as long as your electromagnetic signature remains the same, you can't expect a new outcome. To change your life is to change your energy, to make your elemental change in your mind and your emotions. So if you want a new outcome, you will have to break the habit of being yourself and reinvent a new self. Change requires coherence. Align your thoughts and feelings. So what do your state of being and a laser have in common? I'll make this connection to illustrate another thing you need to know if you want to change your life. A laser is an example of a very coherent signal. When physicists talk about a coherent signal, they are referring to a signal made up of waves that are in phase. Their troughs, the low points, and crests, the high points on a graph, are parallel. When those waves are coherent, they are much more powerful. Figure 1F. When waves are in phase and rhythmic, they are more powerful than when they are out of phase. Waves in a signal are either aligned or unaligned, coherent or incoherent. The same goes for your thoughts and feelings. How many times have you tried to create something thinking in your mind that the end result was possible, but feeling in your heart that it wasn't. What was the result of that incoherent, out of phase signal that you were sending? Why is it that nothing manifested? As you just saw with the HeartMath study, quantum creating only works when your thoughts and your feelings are aligned. Just as the waves in a signal are much more powerful when they are coherent, the same is true of your thoughts and your feelings when they're aligned. So when you hold a clear, focused thoughts about your purpose, accompanied by your passionate emotional engagement, you broadcast a stronger electromagnetic signal that pulls you toward a potential reality that matches what you want. So I frequently talk to my workshop audiences about my grandmother, a woman I adored. She was old school Italian, 
as steeped in Catholic guilt as she was in the tradition of making tomato gravy to spoon pasta, to spoon on pasta. She prayed constantly to things and deliberately thought about a new life. But the guilt that had been instilled in her throughout her upbringing confused the signal she was sending. Pause. How many of you have been confusing your signal, really wanting something passionately, but doubting or being feeling guilty? Oh, you know, if, uh, if I'm the only one of my friends or the only one in my family that ends up making a lot of money, maybe they won't like me and maybe feeling guilt. Maybe you're starting to make headway and you're starting to out earn all of your peers and maybe they aren't able to relate as you. Maybe there's some jealousy and envy and you're kind of feeling guilty because you figured it out at least to get to that level. That's only going to pull you back. I'm afraid to say, but it's true. And that was, that's what was happening here. And that's what Dr. Joe is trying to share with you so that you recognize what, what are those patterns of behavior that are not serving you, that are not good for you, that are not loving towards yourself. Your true self, the tr your true heart wouldn't do that. It's because you're allowing fear and you're allowing your ego and you're allowing the default programming of your brain to rule over you instead of your conscious awareness being the master. But it's okay, no worries, you're on the right path now because now you're gonna get things straight. You're not going to miss the mark anymore. So if your intentions and desires haven't produced consistent results, you've probably been sending an incoherent mixed message into the field. You may want wealth and you may think wealthy thoughts, but if you feel poor, you're not going to attract financial abundance to yourself. Why not? Because thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. If you have a book, ladies and gentlemen, friends and gems, highlight that in your book. Page number 24. Go to page 24. Thoughts are the language of the brain. Thoughts are the language of the brain. Feelings are the language of the body. You're thinking one way and feeling another way. That's called fighting against yourself. You're fighting with yourself. And when the mind is in opposition to the body, the field won't respond in any consistent way. Pause. Big time red flag. That's what causes the lack of ease in your body, which over a consistent period of time, as you continue to behave in that way, where the thoughts and feelings aren't coherent and you're fighting yourself, eventually you get disease in whatever the weakest organ or the weakest system of your body is. And that will manifest as whatever kind of illness, syndrome, lack of well-being, okay? Instead, when the mind and body are working together, when our thoughts and feelings are aligned, when we are in a new state of being, when we are sending a coherent signal on the airwaves of the invisible, why quantum outcomes should come as a surprise. So now let's fill in another piece of the puzzle. You might want to even hold your arms together up in the air for at least two minutes at a time during multiple times during this broadcast. So you increase your testosterone level, you increase your willpower to do this work, to self master yourself, to create better outcomes for yourself. Notice I'm doing the hands wide open too, because that also increases willpower. Yes, yes, yes. Now let's fill in another piece of the puzzle. To change our reality, those outcomes that we attract to ourselves have to surprise, even astonish us in the way in which they come about. We should never be able to predict how our new creations will manifest. So we should never be able to predict how our new creations will manifest. When you're putting these things that you are trying to create in 5D, that you are choosing to create in 5D, you, now, you, you never figure out the how. That is up to the quantum, the 5D, that is up to the great I am, the potential waveforms of energy, that infinite source intelligence knows the fastest, easiest, most streamlined way to deliver that to you. So you focus on the end result, okay? So...
So we are inspired to do this again. Now, I'm gonna tell you from my own personal experience, the first few times that you do this, you apply the formula and you see the results where it works, you question if it would have happened anyway because the brain does tricky, funny things to us. It likes to fool us all the time. But after you keep on deliberately doing this and instead of an unwanted situation coming up and you moaning and groaning about it, you hit the pause button, you decide to slow down your heart rate, slow down your breath, slow down those brain waves, and start to meditate, start to get into the theta state so that now you can create, you can collapse those potential waveforms of energy, start to turn them into particles, put the order in of what you want, Feel the elevated emotion of joy because you know you've got this. Oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. And then you have gratitude. You have that awesome attitude of gratitude. And you're in so much appreciation because, oh my gosh, yes, you created it in quantum. You're feeling it in the 5D quantum. And when you know you've got it, you let it go. And then you're like, you're still in gratitude and, you know, and appreciation when you come out of it because you're like, oh my God. It. I sent the order in. It's like sending an email to the universe and going, this is what I want. This is what I'm having. I have it. Oh my gosh. It's no different than you putting an order with Amazon and now you're, you know, you paid for it. How did you pay for it? Elevated emotion. You have focused awareness, elevated emotion, and then you don't have an attachment. You let it go. And now you have the intention of eager anticipation, knowing that because you place your order on Amazon, you know that it's just a matter of time. You don't know exactly when, but you have an idea of when it's going to be delivered to you. And then you're pleasantly surprised when sometimes you order at 9 p.m. at night and the next morning it's there shipped to your front door. Or maybe it's three days later. Maybe it's 21 days later. It doesn't matter. The point is you ordered it. It's on its way. It's on its way. Yay, yay, yay time to celebrate so you can be going oh my gosh i ordered this i ordered this i ordered this in quantum you're starting to stack a nice little number of things that you have in your little stockpile of things that you wanted that you now know you're you're having and now it's just a matter of time before it starts the surprises the pleasant they're always pleasant surprises start to pop into your realm of reality and you're like oh my gosh Will it work again? Yes, it'll work again. I know. Oh my gosh, I can use meditation for this. And I can use meditation for this. And I can use... And you're off to the races. So they have to wake us up from the dream of the routine reality that we've grown accustomed to. And these manifestations should leave us with no doubt. And our consciousness may... Be... Okay, these manifestations should leave us no doubt that our consciousness made contact with the quantum in 5D, in the quantum field of intelligence. So we are inspired to do this again. That is the joy of a creative process. It's almost like you're a magician. But if you're uncomfortable with being the magician, just think of it as you're tapping into the quantum Amazon cloud and you're saying I want this I want this I want this and this is what I want so this is what I'm having so in 5d you have it so now it's being queued up and now it's going to come into your experience so just make believe you're putting in orders orders to Amazon so why should you want a quantum surprise if you can predict an event it is nothing it's nothing new it's routine it's automatic and you have experienced it many times before. If you can predict it, the same, you produced the same familiar outcome. In fact, if you're trying to control how an outcome will occur, you just went Newtonian. Newtonian classical physics was about trying to anticipate and predict events. It was all about cause and effect. So what does going Newtonian mean when you applied to your ability to create. It's when the external environment is controlling your internal environment of thinking and feeling. That's 
cause and effect. Instead, change your internal environment, the way you think and feel, and then see how the ex external environment is altered by your efforts. Strive to create an unknown, a new future experience. Then with an unforeseen event, when it occurs in your favor, you will be pleasantly surprised. You just became a quantum creator. You just went from cause and effect to causing an effect. You're an alchemist. You're a magician. You're a divine mystic creator, quantum creator. So hold a clear intention of what you want, but leave the how details to the unpredictable quantum field. Let it orchestrate an event in your life in a way that is just right for you. Pause button. I want you guys to jot down. If you're watching this video in replay, I want you to hit the pause button. I want you to take your journal, take a composition notebook, and I want you to write down what it is that you are going to cre create in quantum. Write down what the end result of what it is that you want. Do you want a new car? Do you want a new house? Do you want a new job? Do you just want somebody to take you out to dinner? Do you want to manifest a free Starbucks? Do you, do you want to manifest French fries? I've manifested all of those things. I even manifested double, double Starbucks, not because I couldn't afford it, but it's fun when you manifest fr free French fries, free Starbucks, not one, but two of them, you know, it's fun. You're, you're dancing now with quantum. You really are. You're dancing with quantum. You're having fun. Things you can try to manifest beautiful flowers, perfume. It doesn't matter. Pick something. If you're a golfer, manifest personalized golf balls. I don't know. Make up whatever it is that you want. It doesn't matter. Manifest a book. Manifest a trip. There was a lady who actually, her and her mother both wanted to go to Hawaii. They both wanted to go to Hawaii, but they couldn't afford it. And they really, really, really wanted to go to Hawaii. This actually happened like a couple decades, a couple decades ago. And the daughter had never earned more than minimum wage. Her mother earned just a smidge over minimum wage. So there's no way they could ever afford plane tickets, let alone a hotel and a whole trip to Hawaii. And so her and her mother had come across this work and they both decided, you know what? Let's play with this energy. And let's see if this actually is true. Let's see if we can manifest a trip to Hawaii. We, they both wanted to go with each other to Hawaii. So every night before they went to bed, they played with this idea in their mind and they started to hold the crystal clear vision of themselves in Hawaii. I believe the daughter felt as if um, she felt the um, spray of the ocean as she stood at the beach, the spray of the warm, you know, Hawaiian beach water, like hitting the sprinkles on her face and the wind blowing her hair. Um, and she felt herself sitting in uh, the lobby of, uh, of a Hawaiian hotel and the sand, the way her toes would sink into the warm sand. And so her mother and her were doing this every night for two weeks. And she was walking on the sidewalk, not even thinking about this, just going on her daily walk, getting some fresh air. When she actually found an envelope on the floor, she picked up the envelope and there was $2,100 in cash and there was a note and it said if you found this you are the lucky recipient of these $2,100 have a great time so apparently some sort of eccentric wealthy person put $2,100 21 $100 bills in this envelope and left it on the floor for some lucky soul to, to find now, because she was in an elevated emotion of eager anticipation, of joy, of appreciation, she had a clear focused intention of what she wanted. She was the person who was inclined and the universe aligned it so that that envelope would find her at the time that she was inspired to walk down that path. She found it instead of somebody else. 
So she quickly, when she read it, she ran back to her home. She showed it to her mom. They booked tickets and long story short, they both ended up going to Hawaii. That could be you. That could be you. There isn't, there's no thing. There's nothing too big or too small. As far as a quantum, the potential waveforms of energy, they don't recognize a button versus a castle, a $1 bill versus a $100 bill. To them, it's a piece of paper. They could care less. $1 or a million dollars. The energy doesn't care. As far as you looking at your bank account online or on your phone, they're just digits. They're just digits on a screen. What do they care whether it's you know, 1.00 or if it's 1.000000.00. They're all zeros and a one. What does quantum care? It doesn't care. To it, it's all waveforms, energy, potential energy waveforms. That's all it is. And when you're focusing on it now, it's turning into particles. So hold a clear intention of what you want, but leave the how details to the unpredictable quantum field. Let it orchestrate an event in your life in a way that is just right for you. If you're going to expect anything, expect the unexpected. I don't know about you, but I am so excited about the unexpected. Surrender, trust, and let go of how a desired event will unfold. Ooh, that sounds juicy to me. This is the biggest hurdle for most to overcome because we human beings always want to control the future reality by trying to recreate how it occurred in the past reality. Make that part of your old personal reality and part of your old personality. The new you in this very moment is I love the unexpected surprises that universe presents before me that makes me aware of. <gasps> These hold unlimited and infinite number of juicy possibilities. When the doors close, oh my gosh, that door closed. Maybe you lost a job, maybe you were let go, maybe you were laid off, maybe somebody broke up with you. <gasps> oh my gosh, where's the open door? Because if this one closes, that means that there's an open door somewhere. Ah, oh my gosh, there's an open door. How it works. This window closes, that window opens. Now you just have to be open. Ask the universe to show you, okay, where's the window of opportunity? Anytime you have a challenge, every time you have an obstacle, every time you have a result, the nature of it is that you always have three solutions or more to that challenge, that problem, that obstacle that you have to overcome. There's always three. Remember I told you the universe is organized in patterns of three, six, nine. That is part of the secrets of the universe. That's part of what Nikola Tesla talked about, how everything was three, six, nine, Fibonacci sequencing, etc. Aren't you excited to find out what's going to happen next in this book? Quantum creating, giving thanks before receiving an outcome. This is the coup de grace. If I had drums, We would do a drum roll. We did a finger drum roll. I've just talked about aligning our thoughts and feelings to produce the result we want. Yet in the process, letting go of the details surrounding how that event will come about. That's a leap of faith. And it's necessary if we are to exchange a life of humdrum, predictable outcomes for a joyful life of new experiences and quantum surprises. Boy, I can say that for a fact. That is true, 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 true but we'll need to make yet another leap of faith to bring what we want into reality. Under what circumstances are you typically grateful for something? Again, under what circumstances are you typically grateful? You may answer, I'm grateful for my family, the nice home I have, my friends, my job. What those things have in common is that they're already in your life. Generally, we're grateful for something that already happened or is already present in our lives. You and I have been conditioned into believing that 
We need a reason for joy, a motivation to feel gratitude, grounds to be in a state of love. That's relying on external reality to make us feel different internally. It's Newtonian's or Newton's model. The new model of reality challenges us as quantum creators. My friends and gems, that's what I should call you guys, quantum creators. Woohoo! To change something within us, in mind and our body, in our thoughts and feelings, become before we can experience the physical evidence with our senses. So again, if you have a book, highlight this. You're going to highlight this section right here that says, the new model of reality changes us as quantum creators to change something within us in mind and body, in our thoughts and our feelings before we can experience the physical evidence with our senses. Can you give thanks and feel the elevated emotions associated with a desired event before it occurs? before you get that new house, before you get that car and you can hold the wheel, before you have that special love in your life, before you go on that vacation, before you take that trip around the world, before you sit in that gorgeous new boat, before you have that new wardrobe of Prada and Dolce and & Gabbana and Eva Varro and Tory Burch clothes, shoes, Calvin Klein and MK shoes, handbags and so forth. Can you imagine that reality so completely that you begin to be in that future life now? Can you? What if? In terms of quantum creating, can you give thanks for something that exists as a potential in quantum field but has not happen in your reality? If so, you are moving from cause and effect, waiting for something outside of you to make a change inside of you, to causing an effect, changing something inside of you first, to cause an effect outside of you. When you are in a state of gratitude, you transmit a signal into the field that an event has already occurred. Gratitude is more than an intellectual thought process. You have to feel as though whatever it is that you want is in your reality at this very moment. Thus, your body, which only understands feelings, must be convinced that it has the emotional quotient of the future experience happening to you now. This is what I call brain hacking. You are hacking your brain. You're making your brain feel and think that what it is that you created in 5D is already, you've already experienced it. Because you have that elevated emotion of unconditional love, of joy, of bliss, of you're being ecstatic, of being exuberant. You are like, Oh my gosh and then you're like thank you thank you thank you oh my gosh i appreciate you infinite source intelligence thank you thank you thank you oh my gosh this is so wonderful i got this this is how it's done oh my gosh i'm a quantum creator oh my gosh yes 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 i did it i did it i did it thank you thank you thank you and you let it go you're like oh, i got the order in now i get to be surprised with a very pleasant very cool very amazing outcome I just don't know when. I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know where, but I know that my intuitive senses, I know that because I am connected to the one now, that I am going to be prompted at just the right time to be, do, have whatever I need to do in order to experience that outcome. And it will come as a surprise to you somewhere, somehow. So you have to feel as though whatever you want is in your reality at this very moment. Thus, your body, which only understands feelings. Highlight that in your book. Your body, which only understands feelings. Your body does not go based on thoughts. You use your brain to give commands with thoughts, but your brain 
only understands feelings. Remember, thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. Your body must be convinced that it has the emotional quotient of the future experience happening to you now. So the universal intelligence and the quantum field. I hope by now you agree on some basic underlying concepts of the quantum model that all physical reality is primarily energy existing in a vast web that is interconnected across space and time. That web, the quantum field, holds all possibilities which we can collapse into reality through our thoughts, through consciousness. So observation, feelings, and the state of being. Remember the state of being. Victory, you could be in gratitude. Yes, 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 I did it, I did it, I did it. I got this, I got this, I got this. But is reality nothing but indifferent electromagnetic forces acting on and in response to one another? Is the animating spirit within us simply a function of biology and randomness? I've had conversations with people who hold this view. Ultimately, the discussion leads to a dialogue that goes something like this. Where does the intelligence that keeps our heart beating come from? That's a part of the autonomic nervous system. That's a part of the autonomic nervous system. So where is that system located? The brain. The brain's limbic system is part of the autonomic nervous system. So, and within the brain are there specific tissues that are responsible for keeping the heart beating? The answer would be yes. What are those tissues made up of? The answer would be cells. And what are those cells made up of? The answer would be molecules. What are those molecules made up of? The answer would be atoms. And what are those atoms made up of? The answer would be subatomic particles. And what are those subatomic particles primarily composed of? The answer would be energy. So when we arrive at the conclusion that our physical vehicle is made up of the same stuff as the rest of the universe, and these folks bump up against the notion that what animates the body is a form of energy, the same 99.99999% nothing that constitutes the physical universe, they either shrug and walk away or come to realize that there is something to this notion that a unifying principle pervades all of physical reality. Isn't it ironic then that we keep all of our attention on the 0.00001% of reality that is physical? Are we missing something? Quick pause here because in light of this information, it makes, makes me feel like I was so dumb. But really, I wasn't dumb. I was in lack of knowledge, in not knowing, not having gnosis. Gnosis in Greek means knowledge. I was, gnosis is the root word for the word ignorant. I was ignorant means I was not knowing. When you know better, you do better. Now that you know better, you can do better and you can completely do a 180. You can radically change your life. You can, you can be from being completely coy, shy, inhibited, broke, unhealthy to being outgoing, charismatic, happy, healthy, wealthy, powerful, strong, charming, and a quantum creator. The choice is yours. Now that you know, there isn't anything you can't do. So if this nothing consists of energy waves that carry information and this force organizes our physical structures and their functioning, then it certainly makes sense to refer to the quantum field as an invisible intelligence. And since, since this energy is at the basis of all physical reality, that intelligence I've just described to you has organized itself into matter, which are the particles, the energy waveforms, how you're observing it, they start to turn into particles.
and they come together with other particles that you've created and more particles, two particles become four, become eight, become four, and they go to 16 and they start to double, 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 double. So think of the preceding conversation as a kind of template for how this intelligence has constructed reality. The quantum field is invisible potential energy that is able to organize itself from energy to subatomic particles, to atoms, to molecules, and, uh, and it's on up the line to everything. From a physiological perspective, it organizes molecules into cells, into tissues, into organs, into systems, and finally into the body as a whole. Put another way, this potential energy lowers itself as a frequency of wave patterns until it appears solid. It is the universal intelligence that gives life to that field and everything in it, including you and me. This power is the same universal mind that animates every aspect of the material universe. Make no mistakes. This intelligence keeps our hearts beating and our stomachs digesting food and oversees an incalculable number of chemical reactions per second that take place in every cell. Moreover, the same consciousness prompts trees to grow, fruit and causes distant galaxies to form and to collapse. Pause button here. Your body is a protein producing, chemical producing organism. Your body creates up to 140,000 different chemicals, proteins, and all sorts of other chemicals that influence the 23,688 DNA that you have in your body to fire and wire, to upregulate and to downregulate. It calculates of the 140,000 potential chemicals that it can form and proteins. It knows what combination it is that intelligent. It knows what combination of information to either create a disease. This is the universe telling you to pay attention to this information. Those are fireworks. Somebody outside put off a bunch of fireworks. And the universe is pointing out to you, pay close attention to this right now that I'm telling you because your body is a pharmacopoeia. It is the most, it is the grandmaster pharmacy of any chemical known to mankind necessary to heal and to create with the body. It knows exactly, the infinite intelligence that it is connected to knows exactly what combination you need to respond to the emotions of the body. So if your body is in joy and you're creating and focused with intention on a wanted, desirable outcome, it will create the chemistry, whatever combination of those 140,000 proteins and chemicals to fire and wire, to signal to your autonomic nervous system in the brain, to upregulate your DNA, the 23,688 of them that you have, to fire and wire and upregulate and to express a certain health and state of well being and what you want in 5D quantum. If you are focused with nervousness, depression, sadness, grief, worry, you have the stress response constantly going in your system, then that pharmacopoeia is going to signal to your autonomic nervous system in your brain and it's going to downregulate or upregulate the gene of expression to whatever the weakest organ and system in your body is. So the choice is yours. Remember the universe sent off firecrackers and fireworks to bring your attention to this point in the book for a reason. So, moreover, the same consciousness prompts trees to grow in fruit and causes distant galaxies to form and collapse. So from the subatomic form to bodies, to the earth, to galaxies, it creates it and it collapses them. It's that same force, that same intelligence. So because it exists in all places at all times and exerts its power within us and all around us, this intelligence is both personal and universal. So as an extension of this intelligence, we can emulate it. That means that you can emulate it. That means that I 
can emulate it. We can emulate. We can imitate. We can be like it. So understand that this universal intelligence possesses the same awareness that makes us individuals, consciousness or mindfulness. Through this power is universal. So though this power, I'm sorry. So you don't have to be perfect to do this. <laughs> So though this power is universal and objective, it does possess a consciousness, an awareness of self and its own ability to move and act within the material universe. So it is com also completely mindful on all levels, not just of itself, but of you and of me. Because this consciousness notices everything, it observes and pays attention to us. It is aware of our thoughts, our dreams, our behaviors, and our desires. It observes everything into physical form. How can, how can a consciousness that has created all life, that expends the energy and will to consistently regulate every function of our bodies to keep us, to keep us alive, that has expressed such a deep and abiding interest in us, be anything but pure love? We've talked about two aspects of consciousness, the objective consciousness and intelligence of the field, and the subjective consciousness that is a free-willed, self-aware individual. When we emulate the properties of this awareness, we are becoming creators. When we feel resonance with this loving intelligence, we become like it. We are it. This intelligence will orchestrate an event, an energetic response to match whatever the subjective mind puts out into quantum field. When our will matches its will, when our minds match its mind, when our love for life matches its love for life, we are enacting this universal consciousness. We are enacting this universal consciousness. So it's like we become the elevated power that transcends the past, heals the present, and opens the door, doors to the future. We get back what we send out. Love, love, love. I bless this home with love. Love, love, love. So you want to send out love so more love comes back to you. So here's how this orchestration of events works in our lives. If we have experienced suffering, then within our minds and bodies, we hold that suffering and express it through our thoughts and our feelings. We broadcast that energetic signature into the field. The universal intelligence responds by sending into our lives another event that will reproduce the same intellectual and emotional response. Pause. So if you're mad and you're mad because things haven't been working or mad because you've always had to work hard or mad and frustrated because your job isn't where you want it to be or because you had a sucky childhood or a bad relationship with your father or a bad relationship with your mother or a bad relationship with both or you had neither and you had foster parents and they were both sucky parents. Guess what? If that's what you're broadcasting out, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but because that's what you're broadcasting, that's what you're magnetizing with that elevated emotion of anger and frustration, you're gonna bring more anger. You're gonna have more experiences of anger and frustration and more people who behave in a manner that cause you a response of anger and frustration. But if you can go more with the flow, hit the pause button and instead of getting mad, worried, sad, angry, freaked out, you can go up. Nope, I'm gonna hit the pause button. I'm gonna slow down my heart rate, slow down my breath, slow down my brain waves. I'm gonna get into theta state. I'm gonna reach into the 5D quantum realm and I am going to create a wanted experience and I'm gonna change this unwanted outcome that's in front of me right now and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mold the clay. I'm going to mold that energy into what I want. I'm going to change it into the state that I want. And then I'm going to add the elevated emotion of love, of gratitude and appreciation, which are the ultimate state of receivership. 
Yes, friends and gems, make no mistakes. Dr. Joe says all the time that gratitude and appreciation are the ultimate states of receivership. The ultimate state of receivership. Gratitude and appreciation signal to your body that the event already happened. That's the biohack, the brain hacking that you're doing because your brain's thinking, oh, she felt gratitude and appreciation, so this actually happened. Now you're magnetizing your electromagnetic field for that to be pulled in from your future into your present now. People, places, and things start to rearrange now to harmonize and to become into coherence and to come into your experience. That's how this works. It's so exciting. It's so much fun. So our thoughts send the signal out i am suffering we already talked about this and our emotions oh, i am suffering drawing into our lives an event to match that emotional frequency that is a good reason to suffer in a very real sense we are asking for proof of the existence of universal intelligence at all times and it sends us feedback in our external environment at all times so that is how powerful we are yes but i'm bummed that's the good news, but I'm bump. And it's the bad news, but I'm bump. I choose the good news, but I'm bump, but I'm bump, but I'm bump. I did three on purpose on time. You probably picked up on that by now because I kept on telling you about Nicholas Tesla. Three, six, nine. Yes, yes, yes. The question is at this heart of this book is this why don't we send out a signal that will produce a positive outcome for us? How can we change? so that the signal we send out matches what we intend to produce in our lives. We will change when we fully commit to the belief that by choosing the thought or the signal we send out, we will produce an effect that is observable and unexpected. I'm gonna hit the pause button here and I'm gonna challenge you guys. And for those of you who want to chime into the YouTube comments in here. And we're gonna use this as an open classroom forum where every day I will check the comments, I will respond to you. If you have specific questions, comments, or concerns about any of this material, you are free to ask me, there's no charge. We can play with this classroom. We can even set a challenge, which for the next 30 days, we are going to, after we wake up in the morning, we're gonna go, yes, yes, yes. Stand in front of your bathroom mirror. Find your bathroom mirror, stand in front of it, and just go, for two minutes, set the timer on your cell phone. Two minutes and I'm gonna go, yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I got this. I got this, I, I am this, I'm doing this, I got this, two minutes. Yes, 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 oh yeah, and jump in place. You may as well get a lymphatic benefit from this because by jumping in place, just like boxers do, you do a lymphatic flush, you circulate your lymph nodes throughout your system and your body gets energized too from that and you feel better. So it's like a double whammy, increasing your testosterone levels, increasing your willpower. You're going to have more energy and you're going to feel much better. So do this for 30 days in a row. And I'm going to have you do two more things. And I want to hear the feedback. I want you to note it in your calendar 30 days from today. Every day that you do it, post a comment. I did it again. I did the victory pose, and then the two other things I'm gonna tell you to do every day. Oh, we got somebody else who looks like they're joining us here. So the victory pose, the second thing you're gonna do is instead of brushing your teeth with your right hand, you are going to brush your teeth with your left hand. Yes, it's gonna feel weird. This is gonna feel weird because you're not used to doing it. Okay, it feels weird. Ooh, it feels weird, it feels unfamiliar, no, it you can choose to tell yourself it might feel weird, but I'm gonna to choose to have this be a new cool experience. I know that as I brush my teeth with my left hand now, I'm actually becoming more intelligent. My IQ is going up and I get, yeah, it takes a little bit longer. It takes a little bit, it's a little bit more awkward, but your brain is waking up like a Christmas tree. It's making you smarter. Hello, who doesn't wanna be smarter? Let's fire and wire 2600 neural synapses in the brain instead of 1300 every morning let's just try it for 30 days and then the third thing i'm going to have you do is make your bed after you get out of bed in the morning why there's something called the zigarznik effect which tells our our brain subconsciously 
has the Zigar's neck effect. It's always in place. When you do an activity and you don't complete it, your brain has an open loop 